I want to talk to you about the science of fiber and fat loss and why you're not eating enough because we are fiber deficient in the United States. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Lori Marvis. I'm a board certified family and lifestyle medicine physician who's been eating a lot of fiber on a plant-based diet for about the last 13 years. So more than half of my 20 years as a physician, more than 20 years. So I'm super excited to share this very important topic for you. So let's dive right in. And by the way, if you're new and you like this, please subscribe and share and comment below. I'd love to hear how you get more fiber in your diet. All right. First of all, when it comes to weight loss, fiber often gets overshadowed by trendier topics like protein or carb cutting. But fiber is a quiet powerhouse, right? That could hold the key to unlocking your fat loss goals, especially if you've been struggling. So unfortunately, most of us aren't eating nearly enough of it. So let's dive into the science of fiber, how it helps with weight loss, and why boosting your intake might be the simplest, easiest, most effective step you can take to support your fat loss journey. Let's start with what is fiber anyway? Well, fiber is a type of carbohydrate that your body can't digest. So unlike sugars and starches that are broken down and absorbed, fiber passes whoop, right through the digestive system relatively intact. It comes in two forms. There's soluble fiber, right, which dissolves in water to form like a gel-like substance, and insoluble fiber, which adds bulk to your stool and helps keep your digestive system running smoothly. Both types are very essential, and together they play a crucial role in your health and, yes, your weight loss. So how does fiber boost satiety? Well, if you've ever eaten a massive salad and found yourself full for hours, that is fiber in action, right? So fiber is high in fiber. Take foods. Fiber is high in fiber. Foods high in fiber. Oh, my heavens. Foods high in fiber take longer to chew and digest, which means they stay in your stomach longer, promoting a sense of fullness or what we describe as satiety. Now, this can absolutely curb your desire to overeat later. So here's how it works. So first of all, you get slower digestion. So fiber slows down the rate at which your stomach empties, keeping you feeling satisfied longer after a meal. And then we talk about appetite hormones. So studies show that fiber can influence the release of hormones like peptide YY or PYY and the glucagon like peptide 1, which is the GLP-1, which tell your brain you're full. Now, GLP-1 GLP sounds familiar. That's where these drugs like Ozempic and some other ones are very popular and very expensive and people are having a hard time getting their hands on it because they want to lose weight. Well, a cheap way to do it is just walk over to your produce section and to your beans and whole grains and just start adding some more fiber. We'll get to that in just a second. So the higher fiber foods like beans, lentils, and oats are natural appetite suppressants, making it easier to stick to your calorie goals without feeling deprived. What else does it do? So you get regulating blood sugar with fiber. So one of the hidden superpowers of fiber is its ability to stabilize blood sugar. Now, when you eat foods high in refined carbohydrates or sugar, think flour products, um, tortillas, breads, things like that, they cause a rapid spike in blood glucose, followed by an equal, equally rapid crash. And then you have this roller coaster of blood sugar levels, which can really leave you feeling tired, cranky, hangry, <laughs> or hungry, but not ideal for weight loss or dealing with life in general. So fiber slows again, slows down the absorption of the sugars into your bloodstream, which one, prevents the sharp spikes in blood sugar, keeps your energy levels quite steady, and reduces cravings for sugary or fatty foods later on. So by eating more fiber, you can help your body maintain that kind of steady fat burning mode rather than constantly shifting from fat storage mode after blood sugar crashes. Now, let's talk about fiber and fat loss and the gut connection. So your gut microbiome is the collection of bacteria living in your digestive tract, plays a surprising role in weight regulation. So fiber is essentially food for the good bacteria. So when your gut bacteria break down fiber, they produce things called short chain fatty acids, acids or SFA, SCFAs, oh my goodness, which improve your insulin sensitivity, decrease inflammation, 
and then promote fat metabolism. So research shows that people who eat more fiber tend to have healthier gut bacteria, which correlates with lower body weight and reduced belly fat. So how much fiber do you need? Well, the average American only gets between 12 to 15 grams per day, which is far below the recommended amounts. And even the recommended amounts, I think, are anemic. When you look at women, the, the RDA is around 25 grams per day. And for men, approximately 38 grams per day. I would honestly double that. And I would say minimum 50 for women and 60 for men, or if not more. I typically get between 65 and 75 grams per day on my whole food plant-based diet. I'm eating probably minimally one serving of beans a day, typically two. Um, And on top of that, vegetables, uh, fruits, I tend to eat more lower glycemic fruits. I'm not as fond of more of the, they're just, I just don't like them as much. I mean, I like them like more like super ripe bananas or more of the higher glycemic fruits. I do like berries more, like blueberries are a daily intake, cherries, However, I do like watermelon and pineapple. So again, sorry, I got distracted thinking about gimme food. So there you have it. So that would be my recommendation and where I see people really feel satiated when they bring in that amount of food. Plus you are getting a little bit more protein, which can help with those cravings and satiety as well. So if there's something that comes with more fiber, you're going to get also more protein. Um, So even if you're, again, eating healthily, it's easy to fall short unless you're intentionally including fiber-rich foods in your diet. So again, we talked about fruits, especially the lower glycemic, like the berries, <clears throat> certain vegetables, um, like the non-starchy veggies, the whole grains, the beans, the lentils, the nuts and seeds are all fantastic sources. Beans being the most. If you struggle with beans and lentils, I did a video recently about your gut, if you're having some issues, adding more fiber and how you want to start slowly. So, you know, we just don't want to just suddenly... Let's say you were eating 15 grams of fiber a day and now you're going like, well, I want to hit that 50 mark like Dr. Marva said. Mm, Let's take it slow. Let's maybe start with adding some a little bit more fruit, adding like lentils first over the other beans if you haven't been in taking of beans regularly. And then over time, adding a little bit more. So that could look like, let's say you start with a quarter cup of red lentils, which are very uh, easy to digest compared to some of the other you know, lentils, legumes, beans. And then as you go along, increase into maybe half a cup after a week or two. And then you go, okay, I'm doing okay with that. So then maybe you move into like um, some white navy beans or something like that. I would probably save black beans for last. Um, They're my favorite personally, but they tend to be a little bit harder. Maybe mm, I'd say the white, the creamier the bean, or and also the another thing is soaking. So if you find that you're the soaking times for dried beans, even if you don't cook your beans, you're getting them out of a can, which is fine. But still, what I would say is like, if you notice around the soaking times, the longer you they recommend soaking your dry beans, that's probably going to be on the far end or the latter ones you want to add to your diet just to kind of help you ease into this. So start with lentils, which you don't even have to soak. You can just straight up cook them. And that's why I do recommend those first in the bean category. So let's talk a little bit more about tips. So one, like I said below, like I said before, start slow, right? So if your diet is currently low in fiber, you increase your intake gradually to avoid the digestive discomfort, bloating, discomfort, increased gas, things like that. Because your gut mic- microbiome is going, well, hello, what do we got here? And it starts chowing down and you're like, whoa, what's going on? So number two is, you know, add beans and lentils, of course, these are your fiber superstars with 15 grams of fiber per cup, which is two servings. So half a cup is typically one serving. And I will tell you, um, if you can eat soy products like the whole soybean, tofu, tempeh, use soy milk, this is your superstar. It's it's a legume. It's got high protein. It's got wonderful healthy fats. It's so versatile. It's got phytoestrogens, which decrease risk for breast cancer very good for your bone health, uh, excellent for prostate health, so many good things that come with soy products. So I would encourage you to check that out. And so next is choosing whole grains, right? So swap out the white bread um, with and rice and pasta for the whole grain versions. That's a great step in the right direction because you're adding more fiber if you're still in taking rice, but if you're eating brown rice over white rice, you're gonna get more fiber. 
Next is fill half your plate with veggies, right? So aim for the colorful, non-starchy options like broccoli, spinach, and carrots. If you have a hard time with those being raw or eating them, you can steam them. That's a great way to do it. You could roast them. A wonderful way to help start breaking down mechanically the digestion process. It makes it a little bit easier. So think about it. If you eat a raw food and you're chewing, you're mechanically breaking it down. Sometimes if we cook or blend foods, that can make it a little bit easier on the gut as well. Just some ideas for you. Uh, number five is snack smarter, right? So reach for fruits and nuts or popcorn instead of chips or cookies. Number six, don't forget seeds. So chia seeds and flax seeds really, really are a powerful fiber punch. They got great protein, good healthy source of algae omega algae omega threes, the plant omega threes, the ALA. So really important that you. Uh, consider all those options. So let me go over that again. Start slow, add beans and lentils, choose whole grains, fill your plate with half vegetables, preferably non-starchy. Fill um, snack smarter, right, with fruits and veggies over cookies and chips or something like that. And don't forget your seeds. And bottom line, fiber is, again, not just a health buzzword. It is scientifically a proven tool to, for fat loss and overall health. So it's boosting satiety it's regulating your blood sugar and it's improving your gut health really fiber supports sustainable weight loss and without the need for extreme diets or deprivation so again if you're struggling to lose the weight and keep it off missing ingredient might not be another trendy supplement or restrictive super restrictive eating plan it's just adding more fiber to your diet regardless of where your diet sits right now and if you're looking for help like you just don't know where to start i have two wonderful resources for you it's my new book written with Brittany Giroudi. <clears throat> it's called plant-based 101 it's the ultimate guide to mashing the plant-based diet it talks about everything and anything about the plant-based diet i have been like i said being plant-based myself and being a doctor licensed in all 50 states, I have seen thousands and thousands of plant-based patients. I've seen a plant-based patient in every single state of this country. So I feel like I'm in a really unique position to offer guidance because I see their labs. I speak to them. They tell me what's going on. And so absolutely can help you. And that's what we put in this book. It's a primer to starting the plant-based diet. There's recipes. It's wonderful, beautiful pictures that were developed, um, designed by Chloe Stein just a wonderful thing please check it out it's on kindle for right now the print version will become available january 1st the link for that there's no pre-order i don't know it's amazon rule but check it out we're super proud of it and um hope you enjoy it share it with someone maybe buy it as a gift second is our healing kitchen community we've been meeting together Brittany and i with a wonderful group of people for the last year and a half and we meet every single week like today we're meeting and during that hour, I answer medical questions and Brittany cooks two wonderful recipes. The recordings are available and you have this private community. It's not on Facebook. It's a private community where you can speak to one another. There's no ads or anything like that. We share, we communicate, we encourage each other. And it's just a wonderful place. It's a beautiful place. We started this about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, and it's it's been amazing. In addition to that, um, we're about to launch our first course, um, Plant-Based 101 course, and that will be inside the community as well. We also do monthly workshops where I provide a deep dive into a particular topic like cholesterol, osteoporosis, menopause. <clears throat> One's coming up this year, our habits, um, hypertension, diabetes, um, weight loss, insulin resistance, all those things. And if there's a particular topic that you know, the majority of the Healing Kitchen members really want, I will absolutely provide that. So again, this is a wonderful place, safe place to go and find community and not worry about people asking you why you're eating, what you're doing. There's no judgment where you are on your path. And, you know, we're not going to restrict you because you're still eating some animal products or something like that. It's an open place, non-judgmental. We do just, you know, ask if you do share recipes that there are no animal products in it. Other than that, we love to have you. The link is there as well below. The price will be going up next month, and we're super excited. So if you know someone who might be interested in the community, please share that link as well. There's also a free trial if you want to trial it for seven days and check it out. Um, we'd be happy to have you uh, just to be a part of our community and see what it's all about. And thank you, everyone, for being here. As always, I'm sitting gratitude, love, joy, and healing your way. And I hope you have a rest of your uh, evening is beautiful.